Okay, folks, uh, no, it's at the end, end of last class when I was out. Uh, I would try and give you a worksheet, uh, but we really haven't covered enough material yet to uh, do a worksheet. Uh, at this point, you can look over the questions we've already done in class, and that'll give you enough practice. I'm uh, doing up a worksheet on the first half of the unit now, so instead of having you do double the work, uh, it's easier just to cover two short lessons, then give you the worksheet. So these won't take long, uh, two sections, uh, no more than about uh, 10, 15 slides. Okay. So this section covers gravitational potential energy. Now, we'd already covered the idea of energy, and it's the ability to do work. And there's many different types of energy uh, we'll study. And what we're looking at here, at here is mechanical energy. Uh, different forms of energy could be sound energy, chemical energy, uh, like you would find in a battery, or burning gasoline in, a, in your car. They're all uh, different forms of energy. Mechanicals through moving parts. So the two types we'll look at here in mechanical energy are potential. Now, potential is stored energy. So it's the ability to do work, but you're not yet doing work. One type of potential energy is gravitational potential energy. And that's energy that you store when you lift an object against gravity. So when you lift an object against height, uh, if you lift a hammer above a nail, and before you drop it, it has the ability to do work, but it's not yet doing work. The moment you let a hammer fall, it's doing work uh, when it hits the ground or a nail or whatever object. When we look here at roller coaster, and let's say this roller coaster had moved and it's just resting there at the top. It's got the ability to do work and the amount of work it can do is based only on its height above ground. So the height is important, how much it weighs, and it depends on the strength of gravity. So the higher you lift an object, the heavier an object is, the more work it can do. So again, it's not yet doing work, but it could do work. And if you think here about the wrecking ball, this wrecking ball, before it hits the building, has the ability to do work. It could be lifted here at a height, and before you let it go to swing against the building before it comes back in, it has the ability to do work, and that's based on how heavy the wrecking ball is. So the heavier the wrecking ball is, the more work it can do. The higher you lift it, the more work it can do. But until it moves, it's only potential energy. It hasn't yet done anything. There's a formula we use uh, to calculate the amount of energy an object can do. And the formula is very similar to the work formula. If we ignore the first part here, I'll talk about that after. But if you want to look here, work is force times distance and we've already done that and we have mentioned this uh, already in class how much work do you do when you lift an object well it's mass times gravity times distance that gives you the amount of work an object could do just that we're going to give it a special name now we're going to call it gravitational potential energy so right here and again it's equal to you find that by the mass of the object. Gravity is a constant here on Earth and the height of an object that you're lifting it to. So the more mass of an object, the higher you lift it, the more work it could do. So if we look at two examples here, a 4.2 kilogram book sits on a shelf that's 1.75 meters above the ground. How much potential energy does the book have? So it hasn't yet fallen, but how much energy would it deliver if it did fall? So the formula, this EG is potential energy, that's what it stands for, and it's mass times gravity times change in height. So the book was lifted from ground level up to 1.75. That's the change in height. So from ground level up to its height on the shelf. You know the mass, 4.2 times 9.8. And what 
starts up with this here 1.75 subtract 0 remember your formula here says change in height so that's equal to oh, I want to make an equal sign watch your ending height subtract your beginning height so the ending height it was lifted to 1.75 meters and where did it start well unless you're told otherwise assume it started on the ground which will be zero meters so it could do 72 joules of work I'll round that off so steel ball here an example too you should I want you to try this one yourself so you want a little bit of practice so here it is so you can pause the video at this point uh, have a read through the question and compare your answer to what I have so once you have that done uh, you know the mass of the ball it sits on a shelf which is 1.9 meters above the floor and a tabletop is 1.32 meters above the floor what's the gravitational potential energy of the steel ball with respect to the table so if, the, if you had your shelf so here's your shelf maybe it's a bookshelf or whatever but you had the steel ball resting here and there's a table underneath it how much energy does the ball have in reference to the table well it's the height difference that's important from here to there so if you're told that the shelf is 1.9 meters high and the table is 1.32 meters high well what's this height difference to find that you would subtract the two you know the maximum height of the table you know how high the ball is on the shelf so what's this height difference in between well how much do you have to rise from 1.32 to get to 1.9 subtract those two numbers so again mass times gravity times height or change in height so the ending height of the ball is 1.9 the beginning height is 1.32 so the height difference from the tabletop to the shelf is 0.58 meters and you can multiply these first two numbers if you want and that's where we get 31.36 there's 18 joules so the ball is not falling to the floor it's only falling to the tabletop say if you had something in your bedroom if you had a shelf above your bed and an object fell from the from the shelf down to your bed so you're not it's not going the full distance only that partial distance Now you have a 50 kilogram bucket of roofing tire that's been left near the edge of a roof on a four story building. The ground floor is considered zero and each floor is 2.8 meters high. What's the gravitational potential energy in each of the two cases? In reference to the ground and then from uh, the, the floor to the second story. So if you need a little diagram to help you out. So your job is you're up on the building and you gotta retire the roof. So there's a bucket of roofing tire left here. And you're told the mass of the bucket is fifty kilograms. First find out how far is that bucket gonna fall? It's a four story building. So one, this is not gonna be even now. Two oh, this is really bad, it's really not even. Let me fix that for you guys. Wouldn't want anyone to uh, complain over the artwork. So one story, two story, and here's your four floors. Your bucket of roofing tire. Each story is 2.8 meters high. So find out the maximum height of the building.
so the height of the building is 4 times 2.8, 4 stories, each story is 2.8 meters, so 11.2. You know your potential energy formula, and the bucket's falling from the top down to uh, ground floor, zero. So the mass times gravitational uh, acceleration due to gravity, and then the height that's falling. And it would do roughly 5,490 joules, or if you want it to, you could run to 5,500 joules. Now, if someone was really particular, you could say it was 5.5 in scientific notation times 10 to the decimals here 1, 2, 3. So you're going uh, the floor of the second story. So the wording of the question is important. So here's the grand. Here's your building again. And here's your four stories. So first story, second story. So let's just extend that out. So the bucket is here and it's falling to the floor of the second story to there well the whole building is 11.2 meters high well it's falling not completely to the bottom it didn't fall the last 2.8 meters so 11.2 subtract 2.8 and then you would have the height that the bucket fell So that will be 8.4, and formula stays the same. There you are. All right, thanks, guys, and there's only one other short video after this one.